You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. Workers carrying out a study crucial to scrapping nuclear reactors at Fukushima Daiichi have hit a new snag. They're trying to find out the condition of molten fuel inside, but sources say devices developed to take X-ray-like photos to the number two reactor are too large to install. The Japanese government and the Tokyo Electric Power Company spent more than $4 million to develop them. The devices use elementary particles called muons. Muons rain down on Earth from space. When the particles hit a high-density object, they lose energy or are absorbed. Scientists can then use the outcome to determine the shape of a substance. Researchers want to use this technique to gain a better understanding of the situation inside the reactor. Studies using muon detectors have been underway at the plant's number one reactor since February. The new devices for the number two reactor are aimed at trying to obtain photos with higher resolutions. But the 8 by 8 meter objects need to fit the building. Crews notice the installment will require the removal and decontamination of other equipment. They believe that could affect other decommissioning work. And they also learned it would cost more than double the price spent creating the devices to put them in. Government officials and the operator have decided to divert devices in the number one reactor to the number two reactor to start the study as early as by the end of this year. They say if the change works, the new devices may be abandoned. And they say a robot probe originally planned to be used in this month has been delayed because of the preparation setbacks. The largest fishermen's organization in Fukushima says it's ready to allow decontaminated underground water from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant to be discharged into the ocean if certain conditions are met. The discharges are meant to slow down the accumulation of water at the crippled facility. The Fukushima Prefectural Federation of Fisheries Cooperative Associations reached this decision on Tuesday after a cooperative in the city of Iwaki gave its conditional agreement. The group handed a list of requests to officials from the central government and Tokyo Electric Power Company. They include observing strict operational standards and monitoring by a third party. They also ask that compensation be paid for rumors that could impact fishing in the area. Tokyo Electric Power Company plans to decontaminate groundwater pumped from wells near the reactor buildings and then release it into the ocean. The plan was suspended in February after TEPCO was found to have failed to disclose leaks of contaminated rainwater into the ocean. The chairman of the Fisheries Federation said allowing water discharges was a very difficult decision. But he said measures to deal with contaminated water are necessary. Now we'll be waiting for a response to our requests. A senior TEPCO official thanked the Fisheries Federation for its understanding. He said the company is hoping to respond quickly. The operator of a nuclear power plant in southwestern Japan has brought one of its reactors back online. It's the first time in nearly two years that a reactor in the country is up and running. But the restart has done little to dampen the debate over the role of nuclear power. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa has more. Japanese officials put new regulations in place following the crisis at Fukushima Daiichi in 2011. The number one reactor at the Sendai plant in Kagoshima is the first to come online under the requirements. <laughs> But many people are opposed to the restart. Some of them held a rally to voice their concerns. I'm worried this will rush other restarts to stop the concerns over the nuclear accidents four years ago at Fukushima. Others are showing support. They believe restarting the plant is the only way to revitalize the local economy. We've seen many shops around here go out of business. I hope they'll open up again. The disaster in Fukushima forced Japan to rely on other sources of energy. By May 2012, all of Japan's 54 reactors were offline. 
Some plant operators decided to scrap all the facilities, including the ones at Fukushima Daiichi. That leaves a total of 43 reactors in Japan, and Sendai is the only one in operation. At Fukushima Daiichi, water passed over the reactor core and was turned into steam to power a turbine. That posed the risk of contaminated water being discharged outside the plant. But the reactors at Sendai use a different system. Contaminated water does not flow directly to the turbine. It stays within a container. Experts say this poses less risk to the environment. Under the new regulations, plant operators are required to take measures to deal with severe accidents. They must draw up emergency scenarios for bigger earthquakes and tsunami than before. Government regulators check the plans, and two reactors in the Sendai plant pass the screenings. Some people say the requirements aren't enough to guarantee the safety of local residents. Municipalities within 30 kilometers of the plant were required to draft evacuation plans, but they haven't had the time to adapt them. Some roads are too narrow, with no room for people to evacuate on foot. Kagoshima Prefecture has begun widening roads, but officials say the work could take as long as 80 years to complete. Despite these concerns, Japanese officials have stressed their determination to bring more nuclear plants back online. You idiot! You naive, foolish, irresponsible nincompoop! There is really no description of stupidity, no matter how vivid, that is adequate. I quake at the imbecility of it all. We have gotten cabinet approval to promote the restart of nuclear reactors. If we can confirm that the nuclear facilities have passed inspections under the world's strictest level of regulations. Japanese leaders say they'll continue making an effort to win the people's understanding. Mitsuko Nishikawa, NHK World. Officials at the power company are expecting the restart to contribute to the energy supply starting next month. The number one reactor is capable of providing about 5% of peak power consumption in summer. Prior to the nuclear disaster, the company depended on nuclear energy for about 40% of the power it generates. Officials say they are currently meeting demand by running thermal plants at full capacity and procuring power from other sources. But they say operations have been halted frequently due to a variety of problems with the aging facilities. Fukushima governor seeks safety first. The governor of Fukushima prefecture says Japan's nuclear energy policy should place utmost priority on ensuring people's safety and giving them a sense of security. Misao Uchibori issued a statement in response to the restart on Tuesday of the Sendai nuclear plant in southwestern Japan. The first time in nearly two years for a nuclear facility in the country to come online. By the way, the Sendai nuclear power plant is just a few kilometers away from an active volcano that recently erupted. He said the government's policy should reflect the lessons learned from the accident at the Daiichi plant in Fukushima. What a typical political line void of substance. He said his prefecture will continue pressing the government and Tokyo Electric Power Company to scrap all nuclear plants in Fukushima. TEPCO is the Daiichi plant's operator. Jeepers, scrapping Fukushima Daiichi seems like a no-brainer, so they want to also scrap Fukushima Daini located just south of Fukushima Daiichi. Uchibori said the prefecture will also do its utmost to realize its basic principle for reconstruction, fostering a society that does not depend on nuclear power. Wait a minute, reconstruction? Really? Reconstruction? They're in such denial it's really frightening. Former residents of Naimi Town, which was designated a no-entry zone after the nuclear accident, expressed mixed emotions at the news of the restart of the Sendai plant. An 83-year-old man was against the move, saying the suffering endured by the evacuees in Fukushima can never be understood by others. A 44-year-old woman said the restart probably can't be avoided, even so, it gives her complicated feelings. She said she believes the normal order of business is to restart nuclear reactors only after confirming that all safety measures are in place, such as securing a final disposal site for spent nuclear fuel and designating evacuation routes in case of emergencies. Well, none of those criteria can be met with 100% certainty, so they're screwed. The woman said she wants the government to think more about protecting lives than profits by looking at issues from the people's perspective. This discovery will lead to a better understanding of breeding behavior among dinosaurs. Shake
笑。